This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, specifically a World Chalice deck profile video, my current build that I've been playing around with. It's been pretty highly requested on my channel as of the last couple of weeks, because it's no secret that I really like the World Chalice deck. It sort of fits all the criteria of decks that I really like to pilot. It's very combo heavy, it requires a lot of sequential thought processes to be going on in your head, and it just it really rewards you when you're playing a deck as complex as this to know more and more about the deck. It really just fits the bill of everything that I like about decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a deck that I can literally just jump into and just constantly be practicing with, constantly be theorying new play lines and new play structurings with, look at new cards that could be addressing certain issues, certain problems, things like that. It literally ticks all of the boxes. And the reason it ticks all those boxes is because there is one box that is the flaws of the deck that do definitely exist, and I'm hoping that there's a way to work around them and try to address them and hopefully fix them in the future, whether it be through future set releases of giving new support to the deck, or if it's just like finding some sort of sequence of cards that can be played that really just like make the problem a non-factor. But anyway, this is a 41 card deck list and without any further ado I'm just going to start jumping in before I start babbling too heavily. No specific reason why it's 41 cards, I just played a bunch of cards in certain ratios, messed around with it, tweaked it, and just ended up at 41. I'm not really too stressed about keeping next 40 cards these days, uh, specifically with Desires and running around and Upstart really being at 1. But anyway, first three monsters are three copies of World Legacy World Chalice. This is very obviously one of the key combo cards in the deck, there's no reason not to max out on it. Same with three copies of Lee the World Chalice Fairy. This card being a Stratos when normal or special summon from your hand is great because that means it works very well with the link mechanic of this deck. You actually very rarely want to be summon normal summoning this card. You always want to be special summoning this. The only time you really want to be normal summoning it is if you have Transmodify in your hand, or if you like you were if you were doing some play that like doesn't require you to normal summon Venus essentially. Like you want to be normal summoning better options, uh, but you definitely have the ability to summon Lee out of your hand later in those turn structures anyway, so it's definitely not an issue. Uh, but the fact that it allows you to send cards from your like hand or field to the graveyard to add it back is also just a fantastic ability. Like This card is very well-rounded and very, very much something that makes this deck as decent as it is. But the only three vanillas that I play from the World Chalice theme are three beckoned by the World Chalice. Uh, Chosen and Crowned are just not good enough. Crowned is literally garbage. There's really no reason to be playing her. Chosen is kind of alright because of the fact you can e-telly it, so it's definitely probably worth as an engine, you know, with one or two Chosens plus e-telly just to be additional World Chalice names as well as having another card in your deck that bypasses your normal summon in the form of the emergency teleport, but honestly, despite having another build that plays Chosen, I'm not too big a fan of it, and like, Beckon is just by far the best one because it's level 4, allowing you to make rank 4s, mainly in the case of Digusto Emerald, but if you want to play other things like Dweller or whatever, this does give you access into it, which is nice, uh, but there's just, there's a lot of reasons why there's uh, not really a use for, uh, for the other normal monsters, and Without wasting too much time, I don't want to get into that really, but the last two World Chalice names in the main deck are two copies of World Chalice Guard Dragon. I see some people play one of it, I see some people play three of it. Two was just the number I sort of settled on because I wanted to have more World Chalice names in my deck that were able to be summoned out of hand off the Link Monsters going to Grave, because that's what really lets you shine with this deck. When you're playing your turns out sequentially correctly, you're trying to mask your World Legacy World Chalice's effect and your Ningirsu's effect from things like, you know, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring by, you know, being able to use its effect as Chain Link 1 and then use the Link Monster's effects to summon monsters from your hand as Chain Link 2, masking the effects that you're trying to force through under hand traps. And so, this card just really assists at that while not being a shitty vanilla monster. And also, this is one of those few cards that the archetype has that puts more monsters on the field because you summon this from your hand, you link away with it, and then it itself can bring a normal monster back from your graveyard to be another link material. So, like, it just gives you extra things to fuel with and extra things to work with, and the fact that it is a hand trap against certain very niche target-specific stuff uh, is actually, you know, kind of good as well. I mean, I've had people side Veiler specifically against this deck because Ghost Ogre and Ash Blossom don't really do a huge load against the deck when the deck is firing on all cylinders, but Veiler on Venus hurts, or if they Veiler Ningirsu, that sucks, 
and this kind of, you know, stops part of that problem if they let you Link Summon before hitting you with any form of Veiler nonsense. So, like, there's there's little nuances that were there the reason why this is at more than one in my deck, but if I was to make the deck 40 cards, this is probably one of the cards I would cut to bring it down to 40. Just saying. But, carrying on, three copies of the Agent of Creation Venus, and then the three copies of Mystical Shine Ball that go along with her. This card definitely is just very good. I think if the World Chalice deck has any success in the future, it's going to be because of playing Venus versions, because Venus by itself is just automatically four monsters, because Venus gets you the three Shine Balls. And now, I have a bunch of people that talk to me about, I don't want to brick on Shine Balls and all that sort of stuff, but you really don't brick on Shine Balls. That's the thing, is if you open Venus plus any number of Shine Balls, that's kind of alright, as long as it's not all three of them, because at that point you're going to Venus summon all the cards anyway, and you still ended up with four monsters, you're still very solid and very good off for combo potentiality, as long as any one card in your hand was another extender, like Lee or World Legacy World Chalice. Even if you don't draw Venus, if you draw other extenders like World Legacy World Chalice, or like things like uh, Gofu or Brilliant Fusion or whatever, even opening two Shine Balls is still fine as long as you're opening those other extenders, even without Venus, because you're able to do things with Link Spider, especially summoning the other Shine Ball. Even opening it with Gofu is fine, because, I mean, Gofu, you can't make Imduk with it, but with Shine Balls, you're able to make Link Spider and Imduk do a bunch of different plays. Uh, and then be able to use your combo your combo potentiality off Gofu and his tokens. So like, there's a lot of different things that like just opening normal monsters makes really good for this deck, but the normal monsters that you have to play have to be ones that are of a specific quality. Hence why Crown of the World Chalice really sucks, Chosen is only marginally playable, Beckoned is really playable, and Shine Ball is really playable because of what Venus specifically does. Uh, so I just I, I don't realize why people aren't playing the Venus engine like it just seems like it's such an auto inclusion and all of your turns without Venus or Gofu seem like they're very very limited in scope you're like unloading way more cards out of your hand than you need to be <laughs> to make the same plays or worse plays so things to consider but speaking of Gofu I'm also playing three of it now this started out at one quickly went to two and then almost just as quickly went to three, because I was realizing that with this deck, the, the bad hands you get are the hands where you cannot put multiple monsters out. So if you're not maxing out on the cards that allow you to do this in an economical and you know easy fashion, i.e. with Venus, i.e. with Gofu, then you're really going to start noticing some problems with your deck. And if you're having problems with your deck building and problems with your deck in, you know, in gameplay where you're not comboing off, a good amount of games, then you should start looking at the number of cards that you're running that let you bypass your normal summon or are just really strong normal summons that put multiple monsters on the field, i.e. you want to be having your normal summons, your good normal summons be things like, you know, that put either two or three monsters on the field or things that just don't require your normal summon entirely, like in the case of Gofu. Even though it does have its pros and it does have its cons with the deck, I mean, you can't make Imduk with tokens, which definitely sucks. Uh, like, there's a bunch of different things that are problems with Gofu, but at the same time, it's still three Link Monster materials that you can use that don't require your normal summon. So, like, that's just, it's way too valuable of a thing uh, to just not be maxing out on, in my opinion. Like, it's just, I'd rather draw two of it than none of it, because if I'm drawing two of it, that means that I'm going to be able to be able to use any of the sort of inferior extenders, like drawing normal monsters or drawing Brilliant Fusion to a lot better of a capacity than I would be if I was just opening other copies of those cards. And basically the only other good like cards outside of Venus to really swarm your board are things like Gofu. I mean Rescue Rabbit sort of does that kind of thing as well, but it still requires your normal summon. But it, it still fits the criteria of good cards that you want to be running that bypass the one monster limit of your normal summon. Uh, which is why World Legacy World Chalice is so good, because he does the same thing. He requires a normal summon. But when he leaves the field, he was essentially three monsters, because he was one monster, and then he bypasses your normal summon requirement of just only summoning one monster by bringing out two others. So, like, all of these things are what make the deck really good. So Rescue Rabbit is another one of those cards that's just like a starter card that really just benefits you a lot in the long term, because of the ability to get normal monsters out of your deck. And that's why Beckend is being run at three instead of two, and why the Shine Balls are in here as well. Is that, like, when you don't open Venus, you can Rescue Rabbit for Shine Balls if you drew too many Beckends. Um, you can always just Rescue Rabbit for the Beckons themselves, and Re Rescue Rabbit just really, you know, complements the deck very well. It works very well with Gofu plays as well. Uh, there's a lot of different things that cause Rescue Rabbit to be in this specific list. I just, I really feel like if you're having problems with your deck not functioning the way that you intended it to, you need to take a step back and look at how many cards are you playing that can put multiple monsters on the field with one summon and if there's a very low number of them and you're not maxing out on them then you probably need to max out on them and then start looking at how your deck is built from there 
So that's just my little that's just my little ranty section of this video on on my uh, dislike of how other people build War Chalice decks. But anyway, I'm only playing one copy of a card for uh, Brilliant Fusion. I'm not playing Garnet. Uh, I just really didn't like having Garnet in my list, even drawing it and being able to resolve Brilliant Fusion. I just didn't like it. So I'm just gonna run the Lazuli. If I played a second copy of like a Garnet for the deck in the future, I'd probably still just play another copy of Lazuli. Uh, but I'm I'll just put it on like just better not draw the one like. That's that's how I've been. That's how we've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh since like fall of 2015. Of just don't draw the Garnet. So I'll just continue to not draw the Garnet. But anyway, uh, one Max C is the only hand trap in the list. Uh, I was playing Ash Blossom in the main, but I just didn't want a lot of cards in my deck that weren't combo cards because in this current list, there's literally like 10 of them. Uh, so like there's there was problems when I had uh, when I had Ash Blossom in the deck and I was like lowered on other card counts. Like I had no Rabbit in the deck. I had two Gofus. Uh, like, there was just problems with, like, combo potentiality that the deck just couldn't start on a consistent basis. So, like, being able to just have the most broken hand trap in the deck seems fine enough as is, uh, because this deck is already very well off going second anyway because of the kaijus that exist in it for your going first and going second plays. Um, I'm playing one Dogran, two Radiant, and one Gamma Seal. Uh, these are obviously for the, you know, waterfront plays, the first turn link combos. That allow you to just you know put more tokens on the field with radiant to link summon more you have gamma seal that you can summon turn one off firewall dragons effect and you can have five counters on waterfront and you just negate cards that your opponent you know plays things like that uh, but these are just you know these make the deck very well off going first when you get to the field spell but then they also make the deck very well off going second against monster threats like dryden's and masterpiece uh, specifically dogarin as well because you can give your opponent like a radian summon your dogarin and then just board wipe them like that's also just really cool uh, because of the fact that you do play counters on your cards, so like there's there's just really a lot of good things that these cards have. Um, the reason I'm playing Dogran specifically is because he was kind of the best one that I wanted to play that was also small enough to reasonably like get over, essentially. Um, all of the other ones like Gondala and uh, Cumungus that I see people play, I don't want to give those to my opponent either because they do have effects on my t on like my turn if I give it to them of removing counters to negate cards or half monsters attack and stuff like that. I only wanted to give my opponent a kaiju that they couldn't use on my turn, and Dogarin is the smallest one of the monsters that are ignition effects only on my opponent's turn, uh, if they're the one controlling it. And then Dogarin just happens to be a Raigeki as well, so like, it just worked out for the better in that case. But anyway, that was like, what, 27 monsters, I think? Uh, it's 14 spells, yeah, 27 monsters would be 41, but there are 14 spells, and those are the. There's no traps in the deck, so that's all of the deck. But there's two copies of Kyoto Waterfront and two copies of Terraforming. I'm doing this ratio instead of three and one, because if you just if you draw Terraforming first, you can play it, taking a copy of Kyoto out of the deck. So essentially, there's only two field spells left in the deck, um, meaning that your Ningirsu draws and your Emerald draws would be better um, in that regard. Uh, you could easily bump this to five with three Kyoto and two Terraforming. That's you know something I tested for a while, and I really liked the ratio of it. Um, I really liked the amount of times I was seeing Kyoto, but at the same time. That same thing I said before of how I just don't want that many non-combo cards in my deck to dilute my hands, essentially. And, you know, the Field Spell definitely is not a combo card. Uh, but then three copies of Brilliant Fusion. This gets you Seraph Knight, also accesses your Lee. Same thing with Foolish Burial. Uh, Foolish Burial actually might end up getting cut because I almost never actually use it to send Lee to Grave. I either hard draw the Lee or I send it with Brilliant Fusion. But what Foolish does do which I find really cool, <laughs> is that I use Foolish almost all the time that I've drawn it in testing to just send Max C to the grave and then add it back to my hand with Firewall Dragon. So, I mean, it could stay in the deck, but this is also one of those cards, like I said, like the second World Chalice Guard Dragon that could be cut um, if you're trying to get the deck down to 40. But uh, I'd probably cut Guard Dragon before I cut this because at the end of the day, this is still uh, an access card into Lee. And so that makes seven copies of Lee in your deck, essentially, because you have the three Brilliant Fusions, the three Lees, and the one Foolish, that's seven. And so that also translates to having ten copies of World Legacy World Chalice as well. Uh, so there's things like that to consider, but uh, it's definitely a card that could be on the chopping block. But because I'm playing Venus, I'm playing three, or not three, two Transmodify. Uh, two, only because I don't want to draw multiples of it. Um, I want to see one, but I literally only want to see one. It's definitely not like Gofu, where it's a monster, so it could be discarded for Lee, or it could be summoned out of your hand, 
Um, and then, like, you could just do other things by, like, rotating the second Gofu out for Lee back from your grave and then summoning that off your World Chalice effect. Like, this doesn't have that same feature. Uh, but at the same time, it could possibly be bumped to three because of the fact that, like I already just said, you have seven copies of Lee in the deck, which means you have ten copies of cards that make this card live because you have the three Lee, three Brilliant Fusion, and Foolish that get you to Lee. But then you can also use Transmodify on your Mystical Shine Ball, so that's another three copies of cards. That's ten cards that make this card live. So, I mean, it could be possible to bump to three, but at the same time, uh, I'm trying to worry about ratios a little bit more than I probably should with this card. But anyway, for one of's, uh, one Soul Charge and one World Legacy's Heart, I think this card's just fine as a one of because it's searchable on your second turn off of uh, your World Chalice, uh, your World Chalice, just World Chalice, in point. Um, it doesn't really do a lot for extending combos, uh, not nearly as much as you think. You have to be able to combo off in the first place for this card to be useful. Uh, so, like, that's why it's not really higher up on the list. Like, I don't know. It's just a really weird card. I don't really find myself resolving it all that much, so it might end up being one of those cards that could be cuttable, but at the same time, because it is searchable off World Legacy World Chalice on your second turn, uh, it's definitely a card that's probably worth keeping in the main deck because of the recovery option it gives you of just adding cards to your hand to combo off further. Again, like I said, I don't know. But anyway, the last two cards in the main deck are two copies of Twin Twister. Uh, you have the Kaijus that deal with monster threats. If you're going second with this deck, you're at a severe handicap to back row, whether it be things like Floodgate, Trap Hole, Solemn Strike, Solemn Warning, things like that. You definitely don't care about Dimensional Barrier because your entire deck focuses around Link monsters and Link is not printed on that card, but still. At the same time, you just you want to be able to have outs for back row with this deck in your main deck for if you do lose the die roll, and so that's why Twin Twisters are there. And I want to be able to hit more cards with my back row removal and be able to combo off with you know, the four other cards in my hand, because this deck does rely on two and three card combos rather efficiently. Twin Twister, in my eyes, is a little bit better than Cosmic Cyclone, because you can manage the discard. Uh, but anyway, for the extra deck, uh, two copies of Firewall Dragon, one copy of Guy Saber the Lightning Shadow. I prefer this over Deco Talker, specifically because it points down. Uh, one Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior, for those are the only two Link 4s and two Link 3s. Uh, for the Link 2s, we have two Orm, the World Child's Blade Master. I never summon the second one, but I really like the security that having the second one in the extra deck causes because of this thing's ability to revive any monster uh, is fantastic. And there's a lot of cool plays with that as well. You know, being able to revive, like, br like Venus that you sent off Brilliant Fusion. Like, there's cool things. Uh, two Eve, the World Child's Priestess. One copy of Proxy Dragon. Those are my only Link 2s. And then for Link 1s, there are two copies of Link Spider and two copies of Mduk, the World Child's Dragon. Uh, I'm considering cutting Link Spider to one and putting the third Imduk in, or maybe even like the third Firewall Dragon. I very rarely find myself needing the uh, second Link Spider. There's plenty of combos where you're going for the extra Link, where you can either do Gaia Saber and Link Spider in the two zones, or if you need the Link Spider and you've already used it, like you can just Firewall it back into your extra deck. So like it's it's not really that big of an issue if it's gone. Uh, strangely enough, so like. I don't think it's a big deal. Also, focusing on the extra link combo actually doesn't really do nearly as much as you'd think it does. Uh, because even when you're doing these combos, you're doing these combos because you're going to be sticking Gamma Seal on the board. And even if you don't extra link your opponent, if you summon two firewalls that are live and then drop the Gamma Seal with counters on the board, it's still just as effective if you'd extra link them because they're still going to be having no way to play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! They've still got to fight through two Firewall Dragons and Gamma Seal that's negating at least two cards a turn. Uh, so, like, there's there's almost no real reason to build the extra deck for extra linking, and that's something that I've found out more and more through testing. Although it is cool, but others two cards in the extra deck are just Digesto Emerald for every combo involving Venus and any sort of World Chalice card, and then the Gym Knight Seraph Knight to resolve Brilliant Fusion. Uh, so that's that's basically it. But anyway, guys, I rambled on a little bit longer than I should have for this video. Sorry about that. It's just I like to give explanations on card choices and things in deck profiles because I think that's what you guys enjoy because you want to know why I'm playing specific cards and why I'm playing them in the specific ratios and things like that. So sorry about the rambling, long, lengthy deck profile, but I think you guys enjoy it more than you hate it in that as aspect in general things. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like this video if you want to see more. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And links are in the description, as always, to my Facebook fan page. 
as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like my content and want to support my ability to continue creating content, then definitely check out the Patreon link. It is the best way to support this channel and me as a content creator. Special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you may know, as always. And as usual, you have my eternal gratitude. You help out so much. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.